without further ado, please grab your most gigantic beers. Um, we're going to kick off the night with a celebration and a delicious drink. Um, so if you were able to grab a six pack, bust it out and join me in welcoming our special guest, Matt from Great Divide. He's going to lead us in a tasting of some of their newest exclusive beers. So welcome, Matt. Excellent. Thank you, Chelsea. Excited to be here. Uh, my name is Matt Sandy. I'm the marketing manager at Great Divide Brewing Company. Uh, we've been partners with Cottonwood since before I started here in 2017. Uh, Ford was one of our first uh, nonprofit partners I met with. And, uh, you know, since then, we've worked uh, pretty closely and uh, we've always been excited to support your mission and the organization as a whole. Um, today, we're going to be tasting some IPAs. Uh, before we get into that, um, like Chelsea said, leave a comment. Like, what are your feelings about IPAs? Do you like them? Do you hate them? If you hate them, why? Or are you curious? Do you have any questions about IPAs, India Pale Ales? Um, we'll get to those. Uh, I'll hopefully be able to respond to some of those uh, later on in the tasting. So a little bit about Great Divide Brewing Company. Uh, we've been uh, running out of Denver, Colorado since 1994. Our founder, Brian Dunn, saw a uh, dearth of high quality, great tasting beer after spending time uh, in Europe and other places and wanted to bring that to Denver. So he opened Great Divide in 1994 on 21st in Arapaho. Uh, that's our original brewery and tap room. We're still there right by Coors Field. So a great place to go before a game or anytime really. Um, and then in 2015, we opened the facility I'm at uh, on Brighton Boulevard. Um, it is a packaging facility that we do have the barrel bar here, which is a, a tap room. Uh, so all the brewing still happens at our original location. And then kind of an, a weird quirk for a brewery, we tanker all of our beer one mile to Brighton and we can and keg uh, all of our beer here. And this is also where it ships out uh, to the rest of the state, the country and uh, the world. Uh, you can find Great Divide beer in around 30 countries, uh, 32 states and all over Colorado. And then some of you may have seen the news, we are going to consolidate locations. We'll be moving back to our original location. Realize that that is all the space we need. Uh, we can brew just as much beer and it's kind of our roots. So we'll be here until around 2022 and then we're gonna kind of move all operations back to our original location. So a little sad to see this go, but uh, from business side of things, it makes all the sense in the world and we'll be excited to still pour out of our uh, original uh, tap room. So India Pale Ales started with an English uh, IPA, which is nothing like kind of the IPAs you're gonna get these days. It was just uh, a little bit more bitter, a little higher ABV version of a, a British ale. Um, when Americans started brewing IPAs, like in the craft beer boom, sort of in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, uh, a lot of them were on the West Coast and they developed a, a style of India Pale Ale that was a little more intense, like a lot more hoppy, um, a lot more bitter, uh, very citrusy, very piney. So that was kind of the uh, introduction to a lot of people to an IPA. Uh, and that was kind of the status quo for a long time. And then more recently in the last five, eight years, uh, brewers out of uh, Vermont and the New England region started really experimenting with hops and seeing what other flavors you could pull from different version, different types of hops. And so the New England IPA was born and that IPA extracted different flavors from different hop varieties. And they were a lot hazier. They were a lot more fruit forward, tropical, uh, stone fruits, citrusy, and they decreased the bitterness a little bit. So that kind of uh, some people that may have been turned off by the traditional West Coast IPA sort of uh, gave IPAs another chance and it breathed life into the style. And after that, there was just like a boom of IPAs. Now, every brewery has an IPA. A lot of people judge kind of your brewery on like, how can you brew an IPA? beyond the West Coast IPAs and the New England style IPAs. Now you can get milkshake IPAs, you can get black IPAs, you can get red IPAs, you can get double IPAs, triple IPAs, quadruple IPAs, Belgian IPAs, sour IPAs, probably IPAs I've never even heard of before. So 
There's lots of different IPAs out there. Um, so to taste beer in general, basically what we're gonna do, pour it into a glass. You're probably gonna wanna fill your glass um, if you have one, kind of like four or five ounces, so like halfway. We're gonna swirl it around. We're gonna smell it. You're gonna wanna smell it kind of with, uh, with your mouth closed first, and then uh, open your mouth, take some deep smells, Swirl it around again, keep smelling. When you uh, look at the appearance of it, is it hazy, is it clear? Are there particul particulates? What's the color? What's the foam look like? Uh, is there any lacing on the foam? Those are all things to kind of consider as you're uh, trying beer. And the, the reason the smell is so big, 90 to 95% of what you experience through taste is actually smell. So most of that sensory experience is gonna come through aroma uh, and then the taste, you're going to get more of a feel for the, the mouth feel of the beer and those things like, is it salty? Is it bitter? Uh, is it sweet? All of those are kind of a residual uh, to the actual aroma itself. So um, to start things off, um, actually, Chelsea, were there any comments I could address on like likes, dislikes with IPAs? There were a lot of feelings. Okay. A lot of people in support of IPAs. We like floral IPAs, citrusy IPAs, yes. okay. hazy IPAs. Um, we had mm -hmm. some folks who didn't like IPAs but got them anyway because they're team players. Um, okay. And some of the feedback that I got, okay, West Coast IPAs got a couple shout outs. Um, that was probably just Ford. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Um, we have some, someone said, sometimes my taste buds just get overwhelmed by IPAs and I can't really yes. taste it anymore. So I switched to Pilsners. And then and my favorite comment about IPAs is they make me burp too much and they're too bitter. I can't stomach more than one in a night. Gotcha. So here's some of the so, things you can get. Yeah. With the, I, I like to comment about uh, IPAs and the Pilsners. Those are kind of like the two beers I drink the most. I love IPAs for that like strong uh, flavor, like bitterness, uh, everything else that goes with an IPA. But when I'm looking for something a little lighter, just like a beer I could have a couple of, uh, I definitely reach for a lager or Pilsner. And Great Divide does have a great lager. So uh, give that a whirl. And then, um, yeah, IPAs are bitter and like your palate could be impacted by that. And that's why it's difficult to do an IPA tasting because once you've tried the first one, you're kind of like, you're, you're, you've already assaulted your taste buds and they could get a little, you know, you're not gonna taste the second one as much. So we'll move on. We're gonna try the Cash is King that some of you got. And I'm actually gonna have that as fast pack because what you guys got was um, an R&D beer. And so when we're developing new beers, we brew a bunch of pilot batches, which is a smaller batch of beer, put them on our tap rooms, we get feedback, we put them through sensory. Um, and that's how we kind of develop the recipes. So. I'll take a fast pack, please, sir. And you guys may know that as Cash is King. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yeti. So uh, I'm gonna pour about four ounces to around there. Um, and so this beer is a low cal, low ABV, uh, hazy-ish IPA. Um, you're gonna see uh, it's pretty hazy. Uh, straw-like color, uh, no particulates, pretty good head on that. Um, as we swirl it around, uh, got some residual foam still sticking around. Um, and so what you have, Cash is King, is turned into Fast Pack, which we just canned for the first time this week. We're gonna tap it in our tap rooms on Friday. It'll be in stores soon after. So you guys kind of got a sneak peek of this beer. So um, giving it a swirl. Sticking my nose in it, you really kind of want to get in there. You'll probably get foam on your nose. But um, what you should be smelling is um, citrus, peach, some stone fruit. Uh, we used a hop, what we call the hero hop of this beer is cashmere. So that gives it those nice uh, fruity flavors. Um, what we we're going for is just like a crisp, refreshing beer, low ABV, but we wanted to still capture that IPA flavor. So Madam hopefully you enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, Kevin said, is Cassius King considered a session beer? If so, yeah, damn, so, that's a great flavor. Yeah. So session beers, like were really popular five, six years ago. And then it sort of like became a dirty word almost in craft beer, which is kind of weird. It, I, I don't know why, but 
the session beer could have been any beer that was of a certain uh, ABV. We sort of shoot a shot for the IPA um, and they kind of came back as a locale, um, low ABV alternative for if you're looking to have, you know, a couple beers. Um, but I think with the session, people were like, oh, these are weak beers. They don't have a lot of flavor. So um, we were hoping to brew something that was uh, just kind of, if you liked IPAs, hopefully you would still like this IPA, even though it was uh, a little bit lower ABV. So you'd be able to find six packs of that um, uh, in local stores or come down to the tap rooms. We have uh, that on tap at, at all our locations. All right, so next we are going to go with the Car Camper Hazy Pale Ale. And just a quick note, some of you may have gotten Caribbean uh, Dream, which was a pineapple coconut IPA. And that won our homebrew competition down in Castle Rock. And so we got a couple uh, kegs of that to pour up here. And I failed to mention that earlier, but we do now have locations in Castle Rock and at Denver International Airport. Um, so, you know, grab a beer before you go. Uh, if you're scared of flying, great place to stop first off. So car camper, please, sir. Thank you. All right. And then what you want to do between beers is clear, clean your palate. So water's great. Crackers, we also, when we do sensory around the brewery, we use uh, coffee beans. Um, so this is just like some uh, whole beans. It helps clear the palate, get you ready for the next beer. So um, that's Car Camper. This is a hazy pale ale, so not an IPA, but it leans towards that New England style IPA. So um, with this, it's a little hazier, uh, slightly darker, it's still got that nice uh, white head um some good lacing on it um this beer has been a huge seller for us um and sabro is the hero hop uh so with that you're going to get a lot of tropical notes uh cantaloupe uh coconut um get some stone fruit too so um this one is five percent it's just kind of like a, a great easy drinker and then if you're into those um if you like the fast pack, you like the car camper, the next step up would be hazy. We're not tasting that here. This is a full on um, New England style India pale ale, uh, a little more body, uh, just great tropical notes. I highly encourage trying that if you're kind of leaning towards this New England style IPA. Realize I'm going on for a little, little long here, but we got one more beer to try. All right, last one, Titan IPA. So Titan is our flagship IPA. It's here, it's Ford's favorite beer. We've been brewing this beer since around 2004. Um, it's our flagship IPA, but you know, every, everything must change sometimes. So we just tweaked the recipe. And a lot of that was because these New England style IPAs were getting so popular and turning a lot of people back on to, uh, you know, IPAs in general that we figured we should revisit this recipe and tweak the hops and the malt bill a little bit to possibly make it uh, just a little less bitter, a little more drinkable. So um, that is Titan IPA. Uh, with this one, as with West Coast IPAs, you're gonna get the uh, very citrusy, very piney, get some grapefruit, get some orange in there. Um, it's a more amber color, and you can see in a glass, it's a lot clearer than um, the hazy IPAs. So this one uh, is darker in color, but you can see through it. Um, so you also get, it's more malt in this to help balance the bitterness. So you should get some caramel and just like breadiness to it. Um, and like, I know Ford's big proponent of the original IPA, but he gave us our blessing for this new one. So um, I think we, we did a pretty good job of uh, taking a much beloved beer, tweaking it in the right way to uh, make it just more drinkable and appeal to uh, more people. So those are the three beers you got. Uh, really appreciate uh, having the opportunity to talk to you guys about beers. Hopefully you enjoyed them. Uh, we are, both of our Denver tap rooms are open. Uh, hours right now are three to eight, Monday through Wednesday noon to eight, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Got some heaters outside at the Barrel Bar uh, on Brighton Boulevard. So you can sit outside there, but um, 
yeah, hopefully you come down and uh, enjoy some other beers because we always have new and inventive beers on tap and uh, or visit us in Castle Rock or uh, at the airport. So thank you very much. Any questions or anything I should address, Chelsea? Um, I just want to give you a shout out from Alex. He says, keep going. Matt, you are so good at this, like 17 months, um, and that Alex is learning so much. So, oh, so. excellent. Thank you very much, Alex. It's actually the first time doing one of these virtual tastings, so I'm glad you really? did all right. Yeah. Good job. You're going to love it. Get another uh, in with the Yeti. So the Yeti represents our uh, Imperial Stout, but he's always around, you know, when we're not drinking uh, IPAs where we're drinking different uh, Imperial Stouts, so. Yeah, I actually picked up uh, some more Imperial Stout yesterday. Nice, it yes. Is amazing, so. If yeah, you we just put out I... Maple Pecan Yeti, so come down, try that. We got Macaroon Yeti coming out next, and then uh, Pumpkin Spice Yeti, and then uh, Peppermint Bark Yeti at the end Ooh. of the year around Christmas, so look out for those. A Macaroon, oh, interesting. Yeah. Fancy. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. you. Oh, it looks like we have a, Kevin, do you have a hand up? Is that a hand? Yeah, because I thought we were going to lose him. I have to ask, with the freeze going on in the East Coast and Texas, is there a correlation to snowstorms and an uptick in the selling of uh, stouts and the darker beers? I don't, you know, I don't know if it correlates to a direct sale, but when we monitor our sort of social media feeds, whenever it's cold out, like, I think people use it as an excuse to bust out that high ABV Imperial Stout. You know, so we have seen a lot of people in various places like snow day, you know, drinking, drinking some stout. I mean, it's, it's good every day, but uh, we do notice an uptick in sort of like visual uh, images of like darker beers when uh, it is colder. That's a great excuse. And it looks yeah. like some folks, it, February is stout month, right, Matt? Yeah, February is stout month. Uh, it's flagship February, which is kind of why we were focusing okay. on Titan and revamping that. But yeah, uh, it's stout month. And we have, like I said, maple pecan yeti. We also have a version of that that was aged in Law's Rye whiskey <laughs> barrels right now, very oh, limited. Oh. And that comes in at 14%. So that will certainly warm you up. Uh, just make sure you you know, have a sled to take you home and uh, you're not driving after that. Amazing. Well, please join me in shouting out Matt in the chat, giving him your best reactions um, on Zoom. Matt, super appreciate it. Thank you for helping Thank us. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Happy to do it.